Hi there, I'm Kina. Welcome to this month's Stumbox lesson. Today we're going to be talking about chromatography. If you just finished our chromatography experiment using Kool-Aid, this is an excellent follow-up video to understand why that experiment works and what else you can do with chromatography at home. Chromatography is the study of separating chemical mixtures by their individual components. So if you think about things in your life that you use every day, like medicine, shampoo, perfume, they're all made of different ingredients. But to study those ingredients, scientists need to figure out how to separate the individual components. That way they can be analyzed for their quantity, their quality, what kind of chemical makeup they might have, and how we can better improve all of the chemical solutions in our lives. Many of you at home have done an experiment at school where you take colors or a pen and you mark it on the bottom of a piece of paper that's a special kind of chromatography paper. And then by setting that paper in the solution, it might be water, it might be isopropanol, you'll see the colors in that color migrate and separate as they move up the page. That is a form of paper chromatography, but there are tons of other types of chromatography out there. There's gas chromatography, they have liquid chromatography, and there's even a really high-tech process called HPLC that chemists in the lab use to analyze the different chemical components in a mixture. In every chromatography experiment, there are two phases at work. The first phase is the stationary phase. That's the part that doesn't move. It's what's being used to separate the mixture. So in a paper chromatography experiment, the paper is the stationary phase. And then there is a mobile phase, and that is the part of the chromatography experiment that's moving and separating the different components. So in the paper experiment, that could be the isopropanol or the water that's moving up the paper using capillary action. In a gas chromatography experiment, it could be the gas that's a different density moving through the chamber. In our Kool-Aid experiment, our stationary phase is our tiny little filter, and our mobile phase are the different solutions of the isopropanol we're using to move through the filter. In Kool-Aid, there are two different color chemicals. We have Brilliant Blue, which you can see in the chemical formula behind me, and we also have Allura Red 40. And those are the two colors that come together in our normal color spectrum to make purple, which makes sense that when they're combined in solution, the solution also looks very purple, but when separated, looks like red and blue. To separate different chemicals in a solution, they need to have different properties that scientists can take advantage of. These properties can be things like size, electric charge, weight, density, and a lot of other things. So the bigger the molecule, the less further it will travel. The smaller molecules can move better through the porous material, and so they move up the paper. In our experiment today, we're taking advantage of the property of polarity to separate the different chemicals in Kool-Aid. Now polarity can be an overwhelming subject to explain or try to understand. And to be honest, it took me a couple years of college to fully wrap my brain around it. So for our purposes today, I would refer you to this video made by the Crash Course Guys about nonpolar and polar molecules. And for our purposes, we'll talk about nonpolar versus polar properties on a spectrum instead of having to go into the molecular reasoning. And so somewhere in the middle of this spectrum, Kool-Aid and the dyes fall into this. And so when we're separating, what we're gonna see is that as we go down the line, the things that are more similar to each other are going to want to move through the column together. So water is most similar to the Kool-Aid flavoring and the water in Kool-Aid. So that is total opposite of the non-polar filter that we have, so those things are gonna pass right through whereas the things that are more nonpolar want to stay in the stationary phase because they're so similar. So those are going to be staying put. So you'll see the colors of the dye mesh into this filter. Now the next color we try to pull out, we'll see we had a bunch of purple. And so the next thing we had to do was try and make the solution slightly more nonpolar so that we could get the red molecules to dissociate from the stationary phase by passing them through in a more slightly non-polar polar solution. So there's always a spectrum. So when we pushed through the 5% solution, what we then saw was the red dye come through the filter because now it's a little, little bit more polar, but still not entirely, and it's less non-polar than the blue. So the blue's gonna stay put, and the red's gonna move through with the 5%, like into these wells that we saw. Once we've removed all of the 5% and the red dye, which are pretty similar in polarity, we have to get rid of the blue. So that's why we put in 25% isopropanol. 25% isopropanol, not quite 70%, 
It's not quite 100% non-polar like this filter, but it is still different enough that it wants to move away from the thing it doesn't recognize as soon as we introduce the 25%. So we'll put the 25% through. And now the blue dye is saying, oh, I have this friend who is 25% like me, basically, and you are still very different from me talking to the filter, that you aren't any bit polar. So I'm gonna go with this new friend and I'm gonna leave. And so the blue dye moves all the way out of this and into solution. And then we end up with a very naked filter. Now we have this 70% isopropanol. And if we decided, okay, we don't care about separating the colors, we just wanna push everything through this filter, this would do the trick because this is still polar enough that it's different from the non-polar filter, but it's similar enough in its high non-polar concentration to the dyes that it can move everything through at once. So if we were to push through 70% to a full draw up of the Kool-Aid that we put through and we saw all the dye in here, all the colors would come out at the same time. Because again, this is still not as non-polar as this filter, but it's slightly polar enough to be different than the stationary phase and move everything that's different through. And that's the complicated explanation as to why this experiment works. Now that you at home understand the basics of chromatography and the different chemical properties you can take advantage of to separate solutions, I wanna see what you at home can come up with using our new Stumbox kit. So if there's a favorite soft drink you have or a juice that you think might have different colors that are of different polarity, you now know how to do those separations. Send in your submissions using the hashtag STEMBOX. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, basically all the social media. Again, this has been Kina. It's been so great getting to teach you guys about chromatography today. And next month, we're gonna talk about sharks. So tune in for that. See you then.